Jeffrey Korf, better known as Joffa, is a footy superfan. Now he's a convicted child sex offender. Joffa was sentenced today but won't spend a single day behind bars. His brave victim is speaking out because he says the justice system is flawed. It infected every part of my life. It infected my relationships. It infected my, my friendships. I just thought I'd I didn't deserve anything good. Do you comprehend the pain you've inflicted? How do you live with yourself, Mr Corf? 18 years and 29 days since he stole a young boy's innocence, Jeffrey Joffa Corf is finally a convicted pedophile. Are you sorry for what you did? Far from the fanfare of the MCG. Football is all about community. There wasn't a supporter in sight for Collingwood's most high-profile fan. Normally cheering behind the goals in full voice, now suddenly lost for words. Do you remember Alex now? But the 62-year-old won't spend a day behind bars, walking from court with a 12-month wholly suspended sentence, despite pleading guilty to the sexual penetration of a minor. That minor was Alex Case. Nameless and faceless until today, the now 31-year-old has waived his right to privacy to demand change for victims like him. The sentences being handed down aren't just. I honestly do question why I bothered, particularly after going, going to the police. Like, that was the beginning of my own prison sentence. It was January 2005 when then 44-year-old Joffa abused the 14-year-old after months of grooming him online. Communicating via MSN Messenger and email, he claimed to be David Winston, a 30-year-old from Melbourne's Coburg. You're only down the road from me, so any time you want to meet, you can come to my place or I can meet you someplace in evenings. I was obviously at an age where I was questioning my sexuality. Yeah, I was just literally after someone to talk to. David eventually convinced the schoolboy to visit him. Alex walked the kilometre and a half from his home to his abusers and waited for the door to open. Did not line up with the person that I saw. I knew straight away. The main thought that was going through my mind when I saw him was, I don't, I can't walk away because it'll upset him, it's rude. Then, Alex's life changed forever. In a front bedroom, the windows blacked out with blankets. It was over in 10 minutes. He slapped me on the, on the butt. Um, I was like, see you, mate. The teen walked home in a daze, convinced he was to blame. I just dropped to the ground. I was screaming, I was like, you effing idiot. Why the F did you do that? He texted his abuser. Why did you do that? You shouldn't do that to young people. Joffa responded. Yeah, I shouldn't have. I'm sorry. That was how my, that glass box in the back of my head shut. I was like, OK, I've got closure, let's move on. Alex suppressed the trauma so deeply, he says he forgot the incident for almost 15 years. But it didn't forget him. He suffered panic attacks, sabotaged relationships and pushed people and opportunities away. All I knew was that I didn't feel that I deserved anything good and that I wasn't a good person. Most survivors feel a level of shame because they've been groomed by their perpetrators and they're made to feel complicit. Craig Hughes-Cashmore founded Samson, Australia's leading support group for male survivors of child sex abuse. It's one in six boys are sexually abused uh, before the age of 18. Men on average take between 25 and 30 years before they feel comfortable to disclose or seek help. I haven't really seen many men, particularly young men, come forward and, and talk about something like this. In 2020, during COVID lockdown, Alex was searching his childhood Gmail account for an old MySpace password. That's when he found the emails. It was as if someone picked it up and exploded the box and I just had to deal with everything all at once. He reported it to police the next day after identifying David as Joffa Korf. I have no interest in the AFL, I, even to this day. 
The pensioner was living in Fiji, then moved to Queensland, but in May 2021, he returned to Melbourne for a football game. He shared his location on Instagram and was arrested and charged, but initially claimed the complainant must have been a disgruntled fan. Did you abuse that child, Joffa? A year and a half later, after being told a guilty plea could help him avoid jail, he confessed. In sentencing today, Judge Mullaly described the offending as depraved, but also said it was a one-off event, an anomaly in an otherwise law-abiding life. Korf will be a registered sex offender for 15 years, but Alex says that's not enough. It's not about punishment. If you do something bad, you have to be held accountable. I don't feel that, that he's been held accountable for this because I, I, I felt like I couldn't speak freely. Alex believes the system is flawed and can favour the accused. That's because his early victim impact statements could have been used against him. In Victoria, victims can speak to the impact of the offending during what's called a sentence indication hearing. The risk there is that evidence can be used to cross-examine them if the matter proceeds to trial. I think there's a need for wholesale reform. Victims of Crime Commissioner Fiona McCormack. I think there needs to be ways uh, found to protect the victim impact statement from being used by the defence to attack a victim's credibility. It's one of the things I'm looking at as part of the systemic inquiry that I'm conducting. And to be cross-examined potentially for days on end about the most minute details of those crimes, to say it's traumatising is an understatement. The fact that we ask victims to navigate this really complex system on their own, they don't have uh, legal qualifications, they come in traumatised, it's completely unrealistic. If I can help someone out there feel that or realise they're not alone and they're not to blame, that would make it worth it. What a brave young man. And Alex is calling on the Office of Public Prosecutions to appeal the leniency of Joffa's sentence.